Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 16, and Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for showing us the way and how we are to live this life. Lord God, thank you for being specific about it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 you are witnesses in God also how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. All right. And so this is Paul writing to the church of the Thessalonians. Um, and he is basically letting them know that, um, that they are to act as he acted, right? Um, he was, very conscious in his conduct toward them. He wasn't receiving money. He wasn't receiving payment for what he was doing. He was giving them the gospel and he was working very hard. He was being very meek and humble around them. And he was doing that intentionally because he wanted to teach them how to be, how to carry themselves, how to act as people who are spreading the gospel. It says, you are witnesses and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct toward you believers. So he he was very intentional in his actions. And that is what the Holy Spirit um, was showing me is that in this season, we need to be very intentional about our actions. We need to be very intentional about our, our discipleship in the way that we are presenting ourselves to other believers. Um, we're not perfect, but we need to make sure that we are doing our best to walk blameless um, and and come under the perfect um, covering of Christ Jesus, um, making sure that we are not um, openly sinning and doing things in front of people and, and causing them to fall. And no, we are living our lives uprightly before the Lord and the Lord is our witness and, and the people are witnessing us as well. Because as you live, you teach others how to walk right? People are looking at you and you may not even realize that they are patterning their lifestyle after you. They are seeing you as you are following Christ, right? And they don't know how to walk with Christ per se, or hear from the Holy Spirit as well as you do. So they're watching you to see how to act and so, um, and, and they want to walk uprightly. So they're, they're patterning themselves. So be very careful and be very disciplined in the way you present yourself in the way that you, um, speak about God, um, in the conversations that you participate in, um, in, and also in the work that you do for the Lord, right? Well, you need to be very careful as you work for the Lord, um, to, to not participate in certain types of conduct. And that is the next scripture. And so the second scripture is second Kings chapter five, verse 16. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he refused him to take it. He urged him to take it, but he refused. All right. And so this is um, Naaman. Um, he was a commander of the Syrian army. He was like very highly valued and he had leprosy and Elisha um, healed him of that leprosy um, through the prophetic word from the Lord. And so the Lord um, touched Naaman through Elisha and and not physically touched but spoke the word and because of that he was completely healed to the point where his skin was like baby skin is what they said like a skin of a child and so um he came back to give him an offering right something um as a a token um because he, he, he believed in God after that. He believed that the God of the Hebrews was God, right? And he was faithful to God. Um, I don't know how faithful he was to him, but he, he wanted to be faithful to God from that point. 
And so um, he came back and, and he called himself his servant. Um, and he, he offered him a gift, right? He offered him a token to receive. And so, um, this was a very, um, kind of lavish amount to give and, and he was giving it to the prophet. And so, um, many people might say, oh, well, you know, he's a prophet. It's, it's God's way of blessing him, blah, blah, blah. But, um, in presenting yourself to a, a fellow believer, which Naaman would have been that at that point, right? He would have been a new believer because at that point he wanted to be faithful to God. You can see it in the words that he says after that. And he even um, asked Elijah to pardon him um, for having to go and help his master bow before some other God. And he's like, this is the only thing um, I'm, I, I'm going to do as far as being in the, you know, being around other gods and things being taking part in that. And so he pardoned him for that. And so, um, yeah, Naaman wanted to bless him, but Elijah, um, refused it, right? It says, but he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none. And it says, and he urged him to take it, but he refused. And so remember, there was another younger prophet who, who went back to get the token, to get what, um, what Elisha had refused. And because of that, he cursed himself. And so, um, that was what the part of the first, um, conflation is, is that your conduct towards other believers needs to be righteous. It needs to be holy. It needs to be blameless. Um, you don't need to be receiving money from gifts that the Lord has blessed you from in this season. This is not the season for that. You need to be very careful as to, um, cause if, if you are operating in a prophetic, if you're operating in, in anything, any capacity, maybe you build decks, right. And, and you want to build one for the Lord at, at a church or at an orphanage or somewhere, right. Um, and, and you know that it's going to cost, right. It's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you, um, your ability and all these things, you need to be very careful and very prayerful about what you charge. If you charge anything at all, you, I would say don't charge anything. Right. Um, I don't know about the costs, um, and where it's going to come from, but ask the Lord, he will reveal that all that, how it's going to be funded and all those things to you. Don't charge people for the gift that the Lord has blessed you with. Don't allow, um, money to to become an issue right and 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 charging people for the thing that God is telling you to do amen that's that's God doesn't want that in this hour he he wants your conduct to be upright blameless when other new believers look at you you need to be shining for Jesus and pointing at Jesus and that's about it right um and and showing them how to seek God's face all right. And so the third scripture from the Lord is second Kings chapter five, verse 16. But he said, as the Lord lives before whom I stand, I will receive none. Okay. I'm sorry. We already read that one. The third one is Hebrews chapter 12, verse three, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. So this is speaking about what Christ went through in his suffering, right? So as you are giving of yourself, as you are giving of the gift that God has given you, um, you need to be very conscious of other people. But the thing is, in order to endure, so say this might pose a hardship to you to not receive anything, just look at the life of Christ, right? Consider him who endured from sinners. So the people that he was serving endured from sinners hostility. It's one thing to, you know, endure um, not getting paid. It's something totally different to get the opposite from people who you are blessing, right? And so Christ was getting hostility from the people he was going to lose his life for, 
right? So if he can endure that, then you can endure this, right? So it says you can endure basically um, whatever it is that you're facing, um, not getting paid, you know, the having to deal with people and their bad attitudes and all of this stuff. You can endure that. Why? Because Christ endured this for you, right? And so it says, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. And remember, hostility against himself, it's not just like, oh, people are throwing stones at Christ and jeering him. No, you gave Christ hostility while you were yet sinners, Christ died, right? So in any, anything that is against God is against, you know, the one who created the universe, as you are a friend with the world, you are in, in enmity with God. You are against God. So you were a part of that hostility, right? Um, and so it says, consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. God has saved you from that thing. God has blessed you. He didn't forget you. He didn't leave you right? He, he came and got you. He redeemed you. And so if he can endure what he endured so that you could be redeemed, you can endure what you're enduring so that you can be a positive light for Christ. And, and he can, he can be proud of you and not looking at you like, why is she charging for a gift that I freely gave her? Right. Why is she or he doing this or that? And and they know that, you know, I, I told them no. Right. And so it says, consider him who endured from sin or such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. It's easy to grow faint hearted when you're not in your word. It's easy to grow weary when when you have no example to look at. Look at Christ. It's going to keep you strong. It's going to keep you enduring. It's going to keep you pressing in. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your prophets who were great examples. Thank you for Paul. Thank you for Elisha. Thank you for just showing us what endurance truly means, showing us what sacrifice truly means God help us to be a living sacrifice help us to do your will and and your your work for you um and and not look like the world as we work God help us to look like you as we work Lord God help us to not work for profit or gain in this world but for eternal gain in the name of Jesus we pray amen all right you guys if you would like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he go, comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. All right, and so one of the best ways to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word, and talk to him, um, ask him questions. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, so learn how to wait on his response, amen? Um, also, one of the things that Christ wanted us to do was for, to for not forsake the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Make sure you're going out you are looking for a church home, uh, um, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you in that, as well as um, go out, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Um, one of the other things that you can do is go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus um, and go tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. 
All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.